Hello Internet, and welcome to another video that I'm probably going to call an experimental cataclysm episode. Although we're going to be doing things a little bit different today, rather than talking and looking at multiple changes in one video, today we're going to be talking specifically about power grids that are being added to the game. Also, pro tip, maybe don't eat a banana right before you record some audio. I feel a little weird in the throat here today. Anyway, power grids are a new feature that have been coming to the game over the last couple of weeks, or, or maybe even a couple of months now, and they aim to allow for power grids inside of buildings. And of course, this is a developing thing, it's brand new, and will continue receiving work in the future. That means that what we cover here is most likely, is it's just to show off the concept. The controls and the things that I state in the video will very likely change. And they may change in the very near future, so have a look at this video's date. If you're watching this in the future, things could be completely different. But anyway, let's talk about it. For years now, everything that required power came in one of two forms. It was either connected to vehicles in some capacity, like you putting an electric forge or a kitchen unit into your car, or if it was an item, it was powered using batteries or UPS, like a cell phone or a circular saw. Now we've had furniture in the game for a long time, some of which represent tools and machinery that normally require power, but we've never had any way of turning them on. They were just there for flavor or salvage or whatever, and just things like that. And hopefully in the future we will have the ability to power those things using a power grid. Well, and the few furniture type items that we could actually interact with were things that didn't require power like the recently added Beverly Shears. However, this has often been a point of annoyance for players. People have asked for a long time to have some sort of power grid for buildings. Pretty much everyone wanted this to happen. Even the dev team have wanted this for a long time. To my understanding, it was just a monumental task to get this all squared away and no one had really stepped up to do that work. Now as such, the only way for players to get any kind of power in their base was to set it up using a vehicle. Now, I'm sure you've seen some of these monstrosities in Let's Plays or you've made them yourself. I don't really have screenshots for it, but basically you would put some kind of solar panels outside and run that vehicle all the way through a wall into your house and then set up your lights and kitchen unit and whatever inside. This allowed you to use a weird looking vehicle as a makeshift power grid. Anyway, that's how things have been for a long time and people are now doing work to enable power grids actually to exist inside of a building. So let's talk about how this works. And remember, this is a very new change. Could Literally, it could change tomorrow. So take this with a grain of salt. All right, so now buildings have wiring in their wall. I'm not sure if these were added to really every type of wall or not. I tested the basic wall, which is what is uh, found in pretty much the vast majority of locations. I also tested brick walls, for example, like those that you would find in a light industry location. Walls that do contain wires have to be assigned a new flag so that they show up and that these things exist inside of them. Now, in most map gen locations, we really only use a few types of walls. Many of the things that did not get these wires are things that the players would build, and it makes sense, say a random log wall that the player builds, it would not have wiring inside of it. So although these new wires will appear in most locations that you go to, I'm sure that there are a few that use obscure wall types that may not have the wiring, or at least they don't have it yet anyway, though I'm sure they'll figure something out in the future. And the reality is that most players land in like a normal house for their base, so as far as I know, most locations are going to have wiring in the walls. Anyway, in order to use the power grid, we first have to reveal the wires in the wall. This is done using the construction menu. There's an option called Reveal Wall Wirings, which is a bit of a tongue twister. Revealing the wires requires a tool with cutting quality of two and a pair of pliers as well. Now, I don't really like that it requires a specific tool to pliers. I would much rather this just use tool qualities, but again, hey, it's brand new, probably not the right stage to be offering a lot of criticism here. Anyway, when you do this, the sprite for that wall will update. Currently in Ultica, this does not have an image. It will just display a horizontal line over the wall. And this will likely change pretty soon-ish. Again, it's a new feature. It takes tile sets a little while to catch up. But in some tile sets, this is already represented by a small lightning bolt symbol. Now, if we look at the wall here, it now shows wall wirings, which is also referenced as being a vehicle. It may also display the words power cord, although I'm not really sure why they don't all say this. Sometimes it shows, sometimes it doesn't. This, though, is the foundation of the power grid system. Now, currently, as far as I can tell, the only way to power these grids is using a vehicle. I did see that there is a PR to add solar panels and batteries that can be plugged directly into this system. So at some point in the future, you will be able to do this without a vehicle, 
but at the moment and probably for the near future, the easiest way to power these grids will be to use an existing vehicle. Even once solar and stuff are added, that might be difficult to get off the ground, whereas you can very easily find a working vehicle that you can use as a generator, it's probably going to be the easiest solution in the early game. Anyway, now that we've exposed the wall wiring, we can plug our car into this system by parking it next to a wall with that exposed wire. We then examine the wall using the lowercase e key by default and select plug in appliance. You will then select attach to a vehicle and when prompted select the direction of the vehicle that you're plugging it into. If we now examine the vehicle one of the tiles will have a new part and it will be labeled as power cord. This shows that it was successfully hooked into the power grid. If we drive our vehicle away nothing gets damaged it simply unplugs the vehicle so you can move it back or away and plug it in again if you need to drive somewhere. I would be careful of this in the future it may be that uh, players will need to unplug this or risk damaging their setup but for now there's no problem with doing this. Additionally this power cord cannot be manually removed from a vehicle at the moment. So if you have a stationary vehicle that you can't pull away there will be no easy way of removing it from the grid. Someone on discord called Crytor mentioned a solution which was smashing the tile with a sledgehammer until it was no longer an issue. It's not exactly ideal but I also don't know any other way to do this. But now that we have a vehicle and a power grid exposed we can plug in some appliances. Currently there are not very many appliances in the game. There is a fridge, an oven, and a standing lamp. Now again this is an area that will be expanded probably really significantly in the future. For instance as I've already said there seems to be a PR already to add solar and batteries for these systems. And I remember reading somewhere that someone was planning to add sewing machines, something that I'm personally excited for, but I don't remember where I saw that. But again, many of these things will be coming in the future and some of them may even be in the game before this video goes live. Now, if we want to use appliances, we're first going to need to obtain something that we can actually plug in. Now, these are currently treated as items. So currently you can obtain all three of those items, the fridge, oven, and standing lamp by crafting them yourself. Additionally, you can harvest a stove by going into a house and using the simple deconstruction option. This will give you the oven item which you will need to make into appliance that you can then plug in. Now as these continue expanding I do think this will be somewhat confusing. I think it will be difficult to know when you need to obtain an item via deconstruction or you know having to craft it yourself things like that I do think will be confusing. Okay so what do I mean by that? So this is going to sound very confusing. Basically what we're doing in the game is we're finding a furniture that is a stove in a kitchen. We then deconstruct that, which converts that thing into an item which we can carry around or interact with in our inventory system. And then when we're ready to deploy that to plug it into the grid, we're actually converting it into an appliance. And that appliance is technically just a special sort of a vehicle. So I do expect there to be some confusion around this because we're transferring it from different types of things and I don't think people will understand that and I do think this is only going to get more difficult as we get more options so if that doesn't make sense don't even worry about it right now and honestly there's really no way around this to be honest I'm just pointing out that there will be confusion surrounding this however anyway regardless of however you get the item you will then go into your construction menu to deploy it nearby these are considered appliances and they have their own tab in the construction menu you should definitely be checking this out if you check this tab you will be able to see when new appliances get added to the game they'll be right there very easy to see when you use the construction menu to do this it will then convert that thing from an item into a special type of vehicle called an appliance and then once you have that appliance you can drag it around if that's something you want to do and when you're ready you can examine the wall wiring to plug the appliance into the grid so if I do all of this with my standing lamp it is now plugged in and it can now access the outside vehicles batteries even though it's inside the building and this allows me to turn it on and get that light that I want from it. I can do this by using the lowercase e key to examine the lamp and then choose the option to control multiple electronics. I can also select examine appliance and in that sub menu there will also be an option to turn it on. Now if everything is set up correctly the lamp will then turn on and the lamp obviously pretty simple it just illuminates the area. Installing the stove allows you to directly use it as a hot plate by examining it which is uh, that's the action that lets you heat up frozen food things like that. And then the stove also when turned on supplies a hot 
hot plate for the purposes of crafting, so it fulfills the need to have a heat source when you craft food. And then of course the fridge can be turned on and allows you to extend the shelf life of food via refrigeration. Now I did notice that you can turn on appliances even if they are not properly hooked up to the grid. So if you're noticing that you can turn on your lamp but then it goes out after a few turns, that means it's not properly connected to the vehicle. If you need to pass your electricity grid past a window or a door, you seem to be able to simply plug the wiring directly into other wiring. So basically if I'm standing at a door, I can take one side of the wall wiring, you Use the plug-in appliance option and plug it in on the other side of the door. At least I think that's how it's supposed to work. Basically, if I have a vehicle plugged into the wall, the electricity does not pass through doors or windows automatically. But if I go over, examine one wiring and plug in appliance to the other wiring, it does seem to pass the charge, allowing me to get that electric grid deeper into the building. Using this plug-in option, this allows you to bridge the gap past single tile doors and windows. And again, that's what I think is happening. It does work, but there's nothing in the display that tells you it's working. There's no messages in the log or anything like that. So you won't know until you finally get to the end, plug in your appliances at the end of the chain and hopefully it all works. And on that note, checking the wiring, it's supposed to show you when there's current passing through the wiring, but it doesn't show anything about that at the moment. I believe that's a bug. You can ultimately check the appliances themselves by examining them. That will show their current power draw. Unfortunately, examining the vehicle providing the power does not show you the power draw of any appliance appliances inside so you won't be able to approximate how long your battery will last. Anyway, hopefully that all makes sense. Since this is new, remember it's new to me as well and I'm figuring things out as I go and I'm not 100% confident that I'm properly explaining this to you. I feel like this is going to come across very confusing. I'm hoping once I do the editing and get some graphics on screen it'll make a lot more sense. Anyway, there is one more aspect of this new power grid that I wanted to mention, which I haven't really seen anyone talking about. In addition to the three appliances that we just talked about, and, and you know, I'm sure, like I said, they're going to add more in the near future. But aside from those appliances, you can also use this system to power other vehicles. So let's say that I have a stationary base and I want to have an electric forge. Well, I could install it in my deathmobile, but maybe I want to save some space and just use the deathmobile for cargo rather than utility. Well, instead of installing installing it in my vehicle, I could build a one tile cart inside of my base and install the forge in that vehicle. Since it's on a cart, this would be portable and I could drag it over to the wall's wiring. I could plug this vehicle into the power grid. When I want to use the forge, I could simply pull my main deathmobile outside along the building and plug it into the grid. And just like that, my forge now has power because it's plugged in on the other side of the base. And when I want to leave in my vehicle, I can just drive my deathmobile away. I saved myself a tile and my main vehicle and the whole thing is pretty easy to set up just by plugging things in when I need them. And again, since I built my forge on a single tile vehicle, I can drag that wherever I need it. As long as I can plug it into the power grid, it will work wherever I put it in my base. So in addition to whatever appliances get added to the game, you yourself can build small single tile vehicles that contain the parts that you want to use. So even if no one adds an appliance version of let like an autoclave, or maybe it takes months to get implemented, you can still build your own cart with an autoclave and a tank or whatever you need for an autoclave, and then simply plug that cart into your power grid. And just like that, you've got an autoclave in your base that uses this new wiring system and you didn't have to put it in your vehicle. Now hopefully, hopefully that all makes sense. I found it, again, a confusing to talk about. Hopefully I've conveyed to you how this system works. And really, honestly, it's a very, very good thing. This is a really great feature. It's extremely limited at the moment in terms of things specifically built for this system. Like I said, it's pretty much just the standing lamp, oven, and fridge. But since it can make use of small vehicles that you make yourself, this limitation doesn't really matter. Similarly, the UI could use a little bit of work. I'd like to see some messages in the log when you plug things in that way you know if it was successful or if you've done it wrong in other words if you plug wiring into wiring to bridge a gap past a door i would love if it printed something so you knew it was working without having to hook up equipment and test it out first in the same way some of the menu options don't actually display anything for instance trying to turn on items using the control multiple electronics option it doesn't print anything in the log so if it's not hooked up properly and you try to turn it on it simply doesn't let you select the option I 
I would love if it told you that you couldn't turn it on due to a lack of power or that you had hooked it up incorrectly. And to be clear, these are not criticisms, these are suggestions. This system is very, very new and is still being developed. I'm not tearing down any of the work that you've done. I genuinely think that this is a really great new feature. And these things that I mentioned, they're, they're polished things. There's no reason to worry about this stuff until the mechanics are fully fleshed out. Anyway, internet, hopefully this video was informative and helpful. Several people commented on Discord and on YouTube asking me to cover this. It's a cool new feature. Definitely you should try it out when you get a chance. And more appliances will be added in the future, maybe even by the time this video releases. So yeah, it is all around just some really good stuff. Thank you so much for watching, and I of course will be back with more content in the near future.